Up next, we have a six-bar blues. So we're further diminishing the bar count by coming down from 12 to 8, now down to 6. Ford word is the name, and B is the key. This is influenced by Robin Ford, hence the name, and it's taken from an idea of a chord progression that he played in a tune called Ragged Road from his handful of blues CD. So pretty cool voicings going on here, especially in the third chorus where we're going to introduce some stuff that hasn't been seen before. We're going to revisit playing uh, Anticipations and, uh, you know, a couple other cool things here. And you'll be surprised how a six-bar blues can groove just as hard as a 12-bar. So let's go to the first chorus and lay out the basic stock voicings and check out how it sounds. Here we go. What seems like it's over before you know it, when you start looping it, it's going to feel really good. But those six bars uh, do fly by, especially when you have a tempo of 135 beats per minute. Now, a couple things here to uh, key in on. First of all, this is a blues. It's in the key of B, but it starts on a G-sharp minor 7. So what's up with that? Well, first, G-sharp minor 7 is the relative minor of B. So... That almost makes it a B chord. I mean, if you take off that G sharp, what you have is a first inversion B triad. So it's almost 75% of being a B chord. Also, as the progression flies by, that sounds like the resolution. That sounds like the one, and it is. So it starts off with, let's say, a deceptive introduction. Now, the key, uh, the thing to key in on when it comes to the G sharp seven is the fact that it's voiced the way it is. A lot of times in the first chorus, we've been playing three note voicings. We've been playing our stock voicings. So off the sixth string, we would have played it like this. But here's the deal. Because the fifth here is added, this makes for a great transition when you go to the four chord, the E seven, because it's a half step movement down from D sharp to down to the D. So. Don't be fooled. There's no rules here except for your voice leading to sound good. So we have a four note voicing coming down to an adjacent three string voicing. And it's giving us uh, a great voice leading movement. And we're going to continue to do these little tricks here, as you'll soon see. So from the E7, the four chord, we go up to the one chord. So we have our half step tritone movement and a switching of our uh, bass note from E to B. Now, from here, we're going to back down back to the uh, E7 in uh, bar 5, when you come off of the two uh, bars of B7. Then, you're going to come down to the second position, so what seems like a big horizontal movement, and where you're abandoning the voice leading thing, you actually are not at all. Because that top note D goes down to a C sharp. And there's that grip again. When we first saw this in basic eight, we were starting to use thumb chords. So what's happening here is the top note of the E7 D goes down a half step to the C sharp of the F sharp seven, which is our five chord. Now, at the very end, first time we're not seeing a five chord or a resolution to one, we're gonna see, which is really the two chord, come in. So from the five, we're going to go to a C7 sharp 9. So in the first chorus, we're already jumping into an altered uh, altered chord here. It just it just works and sounds great. It makes a great transition back to G sharp 7. One reason is they're fourth apart. It's not a 5 to a 1, but I mean G sharp uh, to C sharp is the interval of a uh, of a fourth. It turned around. It is the interval of a fifth. So it's like a 4 chord coming down to its 1. But remember, this is not the 1. This is the 6 chord according to this... Uh, progression. It's that deceptive introduction as we uh, named it before. So that's the jive. Uh, that's the gist of what's going on with this. No jive here. Uh, and there is some anticipations. Uh, you notice they're actually all over the place. We're anticipating the E7 in bar 2. And we're ant uh, anticipating the F sharp 7 going into bar 6. And we're sort of anticipating the C sharp 7 by not coming down to the strong third beat. We're pushing it in. We're anticipating it or doing a push beat on the upbeat of 2. 
Okay, let's stick with the same exact rhythm figure here so we don't put too much on your plate as we've been uh, doing in previous segments. And jump into the second chorus here where we're going to throw everything up on the top strings. You know, it's such an effective uh, tool to have because there are many times you want to cut through the mix and that's the way to do it. So here we go, second chorus. So as we said, as I said, I'm flipping the voicings up to the top string set, top four strings for the most part. G sharp minor seven now is same chord, third inversion. You have sharp on the bottom, flat seven. So it's just a matter of taking the bass note and throwing it up to the high E string, pushing it up two octaves. So same deal, we're gonna come and anticipate the four chord, which happens on the uh, upbeat of four of the first bar to anticipate the second bar. That turned into a first inversion ninth. We've seen that plenty of times so far in the chorus. So, and remember, everything doesn't have to be tightly voice-led. This just sounds real good. But I'll tell you, one reason why is because the top portion of the chords are first inversion minor chords, and they're a minor third apart, which is a great, great interval to put between minor sevens. Of course, we're not doing that literally, but those top portions are parts of the idea that I just explained. It's just in this case, it's G sharp minor seven, third inversion up to first inversion E9. And it makes for a very cool change. Now from there, we're gonna keep uh, common tone and uh, move our bass note, our lowest note, up a half step. Create a tritone movement of a half step and get ourselves a seven add 13 in its, uh, in its top string um, version where we have the seven or the flat seven on the bottom. So that covers us for bars uh, three and four. Getting into five, where we're back on the downbeat, we return to our nine uh, in the first inversion. And then for the five chord, we're gonna back down to a voicing where we have the uh, nine and 13 on the top. So we have a flat seven on the bottom. Puts us in a third inversion. We have the nine add 13. But the significance here is how all you have to do to catch that uh, two chord the uh, C sharp seven has come up a half step. By coming up a half step in the bass, giving us that C sharp, it changes the character of this interval sequence completely. Here it's a nine add 13 and it's a uh, third inversion. Here it's a seven sharp nine flat 13 and it's first inversion. But all you have to do is move up a half step. Very common uh, thing to do is utilize chords such as this uh, sequence, you know, stacked intervals and uh, just move them in small amounts while the bass colors them in ways that uh, sounds like you're doing a lot more work than you are. And uh, it goes without saying that the switch from here, yet again, from this two chord, sounds great to this deceptive six chord that sits at the top of the uh, progression. You have all kinds of contrary motion here. This comes up, this stays common, and these two come down. Let's jump over to the third chorus. We're going to introduce some... Uh, Pretty cool approaches to voicing your chords. Some complex, some simple, but all together they sound great. So here we go. Third chorus, forward word. So the one chord turned into this very cool voicing that features the interval of a second followed by a fifth. Very cool interval sequence. So what it is is a G-sharp minor seven, no third, with an F-sharp at the bottom. So flat seven, one, five. That's all you have here. We're indicating that it's a uh, minor chord because that's what we've been doing from the previous two choruses and that's what we want it to be. So the bass player can help you out by maybe playing a line that includes the flat third to finish off the sound, you know, as the whole um, ensemble bringing out the overall sound of a minor seven chord. But your voicing doesn't have the third, but man, it's cool. So from there, half step movement from that top note to just a little fragmented E7 over G sharp, fifthless. So this is like a little piece of a drop two voicing. This would have been the whole voicing. If you remember that, that was the first chord we played um, in the key of F sharp for Sweet 16. But we're taking off the fifth. Remember, fifth is always the one that can go first. 
So it sounds great coming from this, um, this more modern uh, voiced minor seven. From there, we're going to tightly voice lead with some contrary movement to this uh, new voice. And we haven't checked this one out yet. It's a third inversion, seventh chord, where yet again, we have a major second involved between the flat seven and the one. So coming out of the four, you come into the one with this B7 over A. In bar five, just as we've seen in the previous two choruses, the four chord will take on the same voicing that it did when it first appeared as a push beat uh, coming into the second bar. When you switch over to the five chord, the, the connection between the five and the two, uh, you're going to see this. Very cool voicing of a first inversion nine. So what happens here is you have a three, five, flat seven, and nine. It's a close or closed voicing of the F sharp nine just without the root. That's right there. That plays very cool into this uh, first inversion, seven, sharp nine, flat 13, which yes, is the same voicing as you played down here. It's just on a different string set, and really it's to be convenient to get over to this because this chord would not be fun on the top string set. So you have the same sequence here of uh, the three on the bottom, flat seven, sharp nine, flat 13. And that puts it all together here for the uh, third chorus of Fordward. The previous four segments have done a great job in introducing the idea of tweaking the bar count. We started out with a 16 bar count, checked out two eight bar counts, and we went into a six bar count. We're going to revisit the eight and six yet again. We're even going to check out a 14 bar count later. But what we're going to do is return back to 12 bar count. And for the next three segments, we're going to go more into a jazz blues vibe and check out how those changes work, and uh, some pretty cool tricks are going to be contained within there, so they're going to be a lot of fun. Let's start off with one called Basie Loaded. <laughs> <laughs> 